Hi everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor and guys, I welcome you all to this wonderful session of Mechanics of Solids and this is going to be a super awesome class for all you civil as well as mechanical engineers. But first of all, sincere apologies from my side as I haven't been able to upload any stuff for more than 60 days now. Don't worry, there are going to be regular videos from now on and we will explore the beautiful world of mechanical and civil engineering and all of us are going to do that together. So let's kick off with today's session and as you can read, it's unsymmetrical bending. So guys, if you have been following me and uh, the last five videos were based on pure bending, right? And that was the main agenda of discussion. Today, we are going to go one step further and we'll try to explore what exactly unsymmetrical bending is and how does it look basically and what are the mathematical expressions which are going to help us find the value or magnitude of stress at any point on a cross section. You know how to find the stress in case of pure bending, but you are yet to discover, you are yet to work out how to find the magnitude of stress in case of unsymmetrical bending. And even before that, you first need to understand what exactly is the notion of unsymmetrical bending, all of that and much more coming up in today's session. And here we go. We are going to do a very quick recap of all that we've learned, all that we've um, derived in case of pure bending. Let's do that. Let's first of all take the case of a beam and uh, welcome to the digital world. Welcome to the digital world. And here we go. Let's have a beam. Yeah, done. Okay, that's a beam looking good. Uh, sort of rectangular cross section, isn't it? Okay, few physical quantities which needs to be addressed before we really get into the concept. Here it is. This is the load. Load is acting vertically downwards, you can say. Okay. And then we've got this. What is this? Just try to think about it. If you guys have seen my video on pure bending or bending of beams, you should know what surface is this. Well, this by the way is known as the neutral surface. Here it is. Right? Okay. So this is the traditional three dimensional coordinate axis. So along the length of this beam, we have got the x axis. I mean, this has been chosen right independently there is no constraint and but all of them these are also known as the principal axis and all of them are mutually perpendicular to each other right so they constitute what is known as a three dimensional coordinate system z axis and y axis the load is acting vertically downwards that means in the negative y direction this is the positive y this is positive x and this is positive z. Now these sign conventions are extremely important in the context of deriving the formulas for, for the stress induced along this direction. Right? And if you still haven't watched my video in bending, there is not much to worry. Yes, you can work it out easily by watching this video. But still, uh, I would be suggesting you all to watch my video on pure bending or bending of beams. Well, the links to which can be found in the description down below. Go ahead and watch it. It's wonderful, right? You'll enjoy it. And uh, for that video and for all of my videos, watch at a speed of 1.25x, right? And if you think you can, uh, you can um, grasp the concept much more faster than watch the video at 1.5x speed, right? That is up to you. But don't waste your time, right? Here we go. So that is the three-dimensional coordinate axis. This is the neutral axis. Neutral axis is basically part of the neutral surface. So you do you cut the beam, right? Whenever you do a cross section, you are going to see this line. You are going to see this line. This line is a part of the neutral surface. This axis or this line is basically where the stress induced is zero. Let me make this claim. This neutral axis, this neutral axis is where the stress induced is zero. Remember this, right? And in case of pure bending, the centroidal axis, right, worked out as our neutral axis. If you've seen that video, you will be able to relate all of that what I'm conveying right now. Then, axis of symmetry. Now, this is one of the biggest assumption. The axis of symmetry is always going to be perpendicular to the neutral axis. Okay, we'll be reading that out once again. And then, obviously, if the load is applied in the downward direction, the beam would bend and beam would bend something like this. See this rubber, let me come closer, see this rubber, assume it as a beam, right? X, 
y z right mutually perpendicular if you apply the load in the vertically downward direction that is the kind of bend that you will observe isn't it and obviously the fibers are compressed and here at the bottom the fibers are are sort of undergoing a tensile nature or are under tension that is the right word you know you know if the bend is happening something like this if you if you watch it from here there must be a line somewhere in between in the top and bottoms so there is a line somewhere in between that is known as the neutral axis where there is absolutely nothing happening that means there is no compression no tension right and that is the neutral axis and obviously if the beam bends like this now once again if the beam is going to bend like this then the moment is happening in this way this way all the fibers here are undergoing compression and all the fibers here at the bottom right are undergoing tension because they are being extended they are being compressed they are being extended so that is the notion of pure bending okay so that is why here whenever this load is applied there is an applied bending moment at any cross section which can easily be calculated from the concepts of shear forces and bending moment you can find the bending moment at any cross section of the beam and you also make a plot so all civil and mechanical engineers would be able to relate to this all of you have gone through problems based on shear forces and bending moment diagrams i am very much sure about that and you would have made it also so whatever the bending moment is it would be this form this way let me make it this way right so all the fibers over here all the fibers will be undergoing compression and all the fibers over here below the neutral axis will be undergoing tension they are being stretched and the fibers above are being compressed so that is the idea of pure bending okay let us move further <coughs> right let us just have a cross section and let us now analyze the beam okay okay i need to show you some assumptions also which we took here they are material is homogeneous right same composition throughout second the cross section is symmetrical with respect to an axis you can clearly see with respect to the y axis the cross section is symmetrical and then thirdly uh, this is one of the important one of the most crucial assumptions in case of pure bending that is bending moment is applied about an axis the bending moment is acting actually with respect to this neutral axis right about an axis perpendicular to the axis of symmetry and this neutral axis happens to be perpendicular to this axis of symmetry brilliant and this is the axis about which this mz is acting right is active you can also say and with respect to the positive z axis not with respect to the negative z axis remember that fourth point longitudinal axis which lies within the neutral surface so there is this longitudinal axis right from this center to this center this is the longitudinal axis does not experience any change in length that is quite true anything in the neutral surface neither compression nor tension nothing happens and uh, once uh, e e even though even though it would be curving yet the length will not change right all cross sections of the beam remain plane and perpendicular to the longitudinal axis during deformation i think we've spoken a lot about this and finally small lateral strain due to poisson's effect have been neglected that is the cross section will retain its shape whenever you try to compress something even if you talk about this rubber if you try to compress it in the axial direction yes there is going to be some reduction in length in this direction but it will bulge out from this way right in this direction in the x direction if you try to compress it in the y direction yes there is going to be some reduction in the y direction but it is going to bulge out from the x direction right and that is the poisson's effect you 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 can actually work it out very easily with the help of poisson's ratio right if you compress it in this manner how much extension would happen in this x direction all of these things can be worked on and i have spoken at stretch on these topics and you can watch my videos on simple stress and strain for all of that right and so this is a very important assumption bending moment is applied about an axis perpendicular to the axis of symmetry and based on which based on which we will be clearly distinguishing pure bending from unsymmetrical bending and it's going to be fun let us move to the next slide and here it is again vertical load the axis coordinate axis or the principal axis let's say this is the how the moment acts this region over here please watch the cursor this region over here is undergoing compression 
right and this region over here is undergoing tension all the fibers are being compressed are being compressed and here all the fibers are being stretched above the neutral axis all the fibers are being compressed below the neutral axis all the fibers are being stretched let me just try to explain you this way and here it is just try to understand this it's fun so that is basically the neutral axis that is your neutral axis now this this beam must be made up of very small fibers these are the fibers okay of which the beam has been made and the fibers are below the neutral axis also like this like this right all these fibers will undergo a reduction in length all these fibers will undergo a reduction in length which happen to be above the neutral axis this is the neutral axis and all the fibers below all these fibers will undergo an increase in length which are actually below the neutral axis and therefore there is a compressive region above the neutral axis and there is a tensile region below the neutral axis that is the simple idea and it is now better that i rub this off and we can focus on the presentation just a second there is a lot to discuss in today's session okay so you know about this okay let us rather have a bigger picture okay, can we have a bigger picture here we go yeah that will do the job brilliantly there was a derivation which we did something which is going to help us find the value of magnitude of stress at any point from the neutral axis let's say let's say i make a line and at all at all the points there are infinite points on this line right let's say we've got this point right this point happens to be at a distance of y from the neutral axis let's say i want to find the magnitude of stress normal stress bending stress at this very point now all the points on the line are at an equal distance from the neutral axis so they will have an equal amount of stress right so you can use this formula this is something which we had derived okay from the basic laws of engineering mechanics we derived this sigma as a function of y right so if you move this is positive y by the way so if you keep positive values of y as you know this is the compressive region compressive uh, corresponds to a negative value tensile corresponds to a positive value so the value of y that you need to keep that you need to put over here as you move upwards from the neutral axis is positive keep the positive value of y and automatically you are going to get a negative value of stress and this is exactly how the formula has been framed okay if you move, go in the downward direction y will be negative negative and negative will become positive and that means you are going to get a positive value of stress which corresponds to tensile stress so all the points above correspond above the neutral axis correspond to negative stresses compressive stresses all the points below the neutral axis below this neutral axis correspond to positive stresses or what is known as tensile stresses so that is the beauty okay now you've understood this we can move ahead now okay here we go all right now let's let's now focus our attention how to make the stress profile and this is going to be fun and this is something which i hinted in the in the first video of pure bending right we, we we've seen this it's, it's going to be fun just watch this sigma y sigma as a function of y this is mathematical sigma as a function of y is equal to my i always remember this my i and now how is the moment acting moment is acting with respect to the z axis in the xy plane but with respect to the z axis so you've got to put a z over here and this is i z and a negative sign which indicates if you move in the positive direction of i you are going to have a negative value of sigma that corresponds to a compressive stress if you are going to move in the downward direction that is from here you are going to have a negative value of y negative and negative would become positive that means a positive value of sigma corresponds to a tensile stress so you know all of this now guys if you just take a closer look these two fellows mz and iz these two are constants for any cross section of the beam mz is constant and at every cross section right at every cross section iz is going to remain same so these two are constant so let me just write this as constant so what you have is sigma is equal to c times of y so sigma is directly proportional to y okay amazing isn't it 
just a second right now we are on slide 4 let me make some space let me explain you this okay just, just just try to understand the notion so this is if you try to plot sigma against y it's going to be linear isn't it it's going to be linear one more thing which i need to tell you you should remember this y is equal to mx plus c so y is equal to mx plus c can be plotted as this is x and this is y so that's y is equal to mx plus c and this over here this is the intercept y intercept rather it's positive right and the equation of this line can be written as y is equal to mx plus c what if c is equal to 0 if c is equal to 0 in that case this intercept would be 0 the line would be passing from here that is going to be your line y is equal to mx why am i telling you all of this <coughs> because it certainly has a connection with this over here right so we we have the origin we have the origin and let me just try to make this cross section uh, done and done done so this is our longitudinal axis isn't it and this is the y axis positive z axis right so all the points if you start moving from the origin right keep on increasing the value of y here keep on increasing the value of y here we know the stress is going to be zero why because this is the neutral axis if we keep on increasing the value of y the stress value will also increase so it moves in this manner right the stress value would also increase let me just show you this is how the stress value is increasing isn't it if you move in this manner the stress value is again increasing and with and it becomes maximum at y is equal to this distance this distance right you can clearly see the value of stress is increasing it's quite simple and this is exactly what happens throughout the entire cross section i haven't been able to make it properly i'll show you in the animation but this is exactly how all of this stuff happens this entirely is known as a volume stress right uh, hope you've understood the concept now let me just show you the picture and that will that will clear all your doubts okay that will help you understand it in a much better fashion let me just show that to you and by the way this topic is quite interesting but it's very difficult to understand through books i don't know over the past three to four days i've been reading a lot and uh, all that i have understood i have written it down in my own language in a very casual language i like to make my notes in a very casual language right less writing and more drawing that is my funda of making notes write less and draw more write less and draw more i don't know if you know the Feynman technique or, or not richard Feynman. keep on reading the stuff keep on reading the stuff and try to explain the concepts to yourself if you can explain if you can convince yourself then you can convince others also and be very critical about your explanation try to ask keep on asking your quest questions to yourself and you know once you do this uh, things will try to get better and concrete all right so what were we talking about okay we we, we wanted to uh, let's move to slide number four here we go okay here is the profile everything under compression here and everything under tension here all the fibers will be compressed arrow in and here below this neutral axis arrow out done this arrow out and above the neutral axis arrow in so this is the volume stress right do watch video number the fifth video there is a, some some kind of numerical which i have solved through three approaches based on pure bending only you should, must watch that video right a different perspective altogether right again the link can be found in the description or you just type in bending of beams manas patnak in the search bar of youtube and you'll automatically get to that playlist okay so that was all about unsymmetrical bending and one more thing so that that was all about pure bending what is unsymmetrical bending just watch this picture think about this okay just think about this picture what can you make out of it what is different what we've been studying till now and on contrast how is this picture this loading condition different from all that we've learned till now all that expressions that we have derived till now can you can you work out a difference write down in the comments although i'll explain you 
right now <laughs> but do write it down right your reasoning skills will get better okay so earlier the loads used to be absolutely vertical absolutely vertical isn't it right vertical and there there the moment was with acting the moment this is the applied moment isn't it moment was with respect to any one principal axis it could be the z axis if you applied the load well we applied the load in the y direction if we had applied the load we could have applied it from this direction also okay from this direction also and in that sense the moment would have been applied with respect to the y axis all of that could have happened very easily no problem here the biggest difference is that the load is slightly inclined right it is neither acting on the yz axis let me just show you it previously the load was acting uh, one sec one sec previously the load was acting with respect to the y axis uh, we could have changed the axis also you could have made the load to fall with respect to this uh, z axis also in the horizontal direction you could have done that very easily and all the formulas would have would have been same well these things would have changed slightly but but fundamentally everything would re would remain same right the point i am trying to make is if you apply load with respect to any principal axis and here the load is acting in this vertically downward direction that is along the y axis that would create a moment with respect to this principal z axis the biggest problem in this case is watch here the load is acting it is not acting in the y direction first of all if it had been acting in the y direction it would have been applying a moment with respect to the positive z axis as in this case if it would have been acting in the y direction this load then the moment the external moment would have been acting with respect to the positive z axis but here the case is different here the load is neither falling on the y axis neither following on the z axis then how can we approach this very case it's a bit confusing and i am there to eliminate all of this confusion to get you out of this confusion now i'll go to my board i love to draw all of this myself and let us try to understand the basics of unsymmetrical bending uh, by now you must have got a uh, an idea as to what unsymmetrical bending is right the moment when the moment does not here the moment was acting i with respect to any one principal axis and here the moment is not acting about any principal axis it is not acting about the z axis it is not acting about the y axis so what can be done how can we work out about which line the moment is acting or where exactly is the neutral axis how can we find it and how is the beam going to bend first of all and if it bends how can we find the magnitude of stress at any point on a cross section all of these things and much more coming up here we go so guys you saw this at a certain angle when the load is inclined something weird is about to happen but that weirdness can also be worked out very easily by the principle of superposition now what we'll try to do is we'll try to resolve this into components this this inclined load sort of can be resolved into components one along the y direction and one along the z direction where is my laser pointer here it is one along the y direction and one along the z direction and based on that on combining both of them on combining the bends due to both the loads the 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 component loads we can work out the bending stresses expression also so let us take this session forward and first of all let us try to understand the profile of the beam how it bends when it is subjected to load along let's say y direction load along let's say z direction load along the positive y load along the negative y load along the positive z and the negative this uh, z here we go <coughs> first of all just try to understand the bend profile let me talk about this article right now and then we'll move ahead so you've got you've got a beam certain so length of the beam let's say this way and uh, that's the cross section rectangular cross section let's say so i'll take my own time to draw all of this stuff right so this is time consuming better watch the video at a higher pace 1.25x or 1.5x to save time and it's going to be like this okay that's the beam what will happen if you apply load to it now we are going to apply the loads in two different manners one is along the 
positive y direction just let me just show you this is by the way your x axis where the longitudinal axis and this by the way let me try to do this properly oh, is the y direction and this i don't know what happened there this is the z axis all of them are positive the opposite direction you have the negative z in the opposite direction you have the negative y and here it's negative x anyway so these three are mutually perpendicular and these this is what is known as the principal axis what if what if i apply a load somewhere along this direction somewhere along this direction this way let me just show it to you okay somewhere in this fashion where in the direction of y in the y direction right just try to understand this concept and this is going to be beautiful how how do you assess the bending moment to be what is your call just try to think about this where are my notes yeah here they are so load is acting this way that's x that's z and that's y x z and y x y the beam would bend in this fashion is it if the load is acting vertically in the y direction the beam would bend in the xy plane in the xy plane but with respect to the z axis with respect to the z axis and that's why and that's why there is a moment there is a moment right here uh, i haven't been able to make it properly the moment is this manner this is m z so when the load is vertical w y let's say the moment is acting about the positive z axis load is vertically downwards had the load been vertically upwards on the bottom then this moment would have been acting um with respect to the negative y direction negative z direction right secondly the other thing that i would like to touch upon is this just a second <clears throat> so be a bit patient we are going to do this very easily okay now let's 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 have the beam again and here it is the beautiful beam okay that's the length of the beam lovely and that's okay so that is y and that's z y and this by the way is your x axis isn't it now let's 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 do something let's play with this let's say we are having a load acting on this face over here how can we make this it's it's a bit difficult let me try this okay so this is going to have let me just close this down okay so the load is acting in this fashion in what direction earlier the load was happening in the y direction and now the load is acting in this z direction so 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 let's try to make this to a better picture this is how the load is acting right i am sure that you have got the idea of how the load is acting right so this is the load which is acting in the z direction now because of this the beam would bend somewhat in this fashion i don't have an elastic object sorry uh load is acting on this face earlier it was acting on here now it is acting on this face the beam would bend somewhat if it is acting over here the beam would bend oh oh this can break it's very brittle the you can hear the noise <laughs> the beam would bend in this fashion the beam right now is like this it would bend in this fashion this fashion this fashion this curvature this curvature over here oh, i don't want to break a scale it's been with me from a long long time yeah 
here the curvature would be something like this but in this case the curvature would be something like this and here the curvature is actually taking place in the x y plane but here the curvature this curvature this bend would happen in the z x plane so this is basically to make you guys understand how with the impact of load or how when load is applied the bend happens and how the bending moment is acting with respect to which principal axis the bending moment is acting the load is acting in the y direction the bending moment is acting with respect to the z axis the bending is happening in the x y plane here the load is acting in the z direction the the bending is happening in the x z plane but but the bending moment just think about it where is the bending moment acting with respect to which axis the bending moment is actually acting with respect to this y axis this is the direction of bending moment m with respect to y all the fibers in this region all the fibers in this region will be undergoing compression and all the fibers in this region to the left of this axis to the left of this line will be undergoing tension in the same manner here the bending moment actually happening in this fashion right this fashion this fashion so all the fibers above this neutral axis here in this region will be undergoing compression and in this region all the fibers will be undergoing tension so that's the basic idea i am sure you you must have got the point right so that was all about loads and how the moments are generated right and now in some of the problems you will straight away come uh, come across bending moments right a, a beam would be there of a particular cross section and it will be subjected to some kind of moment not the load applied but the moment so based on that uh, you can approach the problem from that perspective okay so this is done now right you know very well how when the load acts in the downward direction it bends like this if it were to act in the upward direction it would be bent like this this is acting in the positive z direction in the direction of positive z the load is happening so it bent like this if it were to be applied in the negative y z direction it would have bent in this fashion so that is the basic difference and in that case the plane would have been x and minus z right hope you have got the idea okay now we can move ahead <coughs> some more important stuff bending stress distribution profile let us make the figure again and let me help you make the sketch of bending stress when the load applied is along y and when the load applied is along the z direction let us sketch both these stress profiles and how the formulas are going to change right let's do that okay here we go <clears throat> bending stress distribution profile good cross section cross section done done with the cross section okay looks good okay done so that's our beam let me make the beautiful axis oh lovely what is this positive y well what's this that's your traditional positive z and this along the length is your positive x axis we are very much interested in making the bending stress profile so all the stress which is acting right is acting along the x direction all the forces are compressive above this line neutral axis compressive in nature but acting along the negative z direction all the forces which are acting below below this this neutral axis are outwards this way in the positive x direction they are tensile that is the idea based on these forces you have got stresses okay okay so we are pretty much interested in making the bending stress profile so that is the first case and the load applied over here guys let's let's sketch the load also the load applied is in this fashion the load applied is in this fashion some of you guys might be thinking why i am again and again stressing on all these points just because i am a teacher and it's very important because students get confused once you know all the tools once you have all the guns once you have all the weapons then you can you can fight a war big time 
right and that is exactly what i am doing these are the tools these are the weapons these are the arsenal which i am giving to you and once you have them once you know how to use them once you know how to perceive them you will be able to better understand the final case asymmetrical bendings stress distribution and that is going to be fun okay you can work it out on your fingertips it's going to be so so damn easy all right so that is the first case second case let us have the same beam again let me make the profile over here okay this much pick done 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 long done done brilliant and let me have the longitudinal axis lovely okay center line you know what this is that's the z axis that's the y axis positive positive and this right over here is your positive x lovely lovely now here in this case the load acting would be would be acting somewhere along if you just try to make this sketch now this way okay the load is acting in this direction right this way and this way i hope you understand the point making all these drawings is a bit difficult that was the load acting in the y direction this is the load acting in the z direction now we wish to make the or we wish to sketch the stress profile you know you already know this remember this formula sigma as a function of y because here the bend is going to happen in this fashion right all the fibers above this neutral axis are going to undergo compression so sigma y is equal to just remember this my i a selfish equation and with respect to which axis just try to work it out with respect to what axis is the bending moment acting the bending moment is acting with respect to this z axis that is mz okay let, let me not write this over here because i'm going to be making the sketch m z so z z here it is sigma again the bend is going to be in this fashion this fashion right the neutral axis is going to change this is going to be your new neutral axis let us individually analyze both the cases here the load is in this direction that becomes a neutral axis here the load is in this direction this becomes a neutral axis right okay so the distance is going to be with respect to the z axis here it is <coughs> with respect to the y axis load and somewhere along this above or below here towards the right or towards the left that is with respect to z either right or left is equal to again my i not my i <laughs> this is going to be m with respect to what axis is the moment happening just just think about it just think about it this way the moment m m what with respect to the y axis so all the fibers in this region will be undergoing compression all the fibers in this region over here this region over here will be undergoing tension the beam would bend i don't know if it is possible the beam would bend somewhat somewhat in this fashion if you apply the load from here it would be this fashion so ahead of the neutral axis compression behind the neutral axis so we have tension right okay so today i'm not going to be solving any problems or any examples it is going to be taken up in the next session right now our objective is to understand the concept of asymmetrical bending in depth okay so that is going to be let me just check mz one second guys mz this is sigma z okay okay moment is happening with respect to the y axis this is y this is y this is z here yeah. z y y with respect to the moment with respect to the z axis z and z as the subscript so this is essentially how you can frame the stress equations and now again if you move up this is the compressive region so for positive values of y you are going to have negative stress and for negative values of y 
put this negative sign over here negative negative will become positive that means for positive value the stresses tensile region compressive region here the stuff is going to be slightly different if you, if you apply the load in this direction the beam would bend in this fashion here the region is going to be compression that means if you, uh, this is the negative z direction if you move in the negative z direction if you move in the negative z direction this direction over here you will get a negative stress negative stress corresponds to a compressive stress once again look here the beam would bend in this fashion let me just try to make this a small sketch the beam would bend in this fashion this fashion isn't it isn't it so so the bend is actually happening with respect to this case all the fibers are over here are undergoing compression all the fibers over here are undergoing tension right yeah so if you move in this direction this is the positive z direction you are going to get positive values of stress because the nature is tensile so if you put the value of z as positive the stress is also going to be positive but if you put the value of z as negative the value of stress is going to be negative this positive corresponds to the tensile stress in this region plus z region and this negative corresponds to compressive stress that means in the negative z direction similarly if you move above you are going to get if you move above that means if you keep on increasing the value of y in the positive sense this way this way this way all negative values of bending stress is what we will be getting which corresponds to this compressive region and similarly the opposite is also true okay for all negative values of gas y you are going to get positive value of bending stress and which corresponds to the tensile stress anyway so that was all about loads moments and we are yet to draw the bending stress profile now as i told you this profile is going to be quite simple let me just extend this slightly this way this way yeah that's it that's it good to go above this region is compressive so all the arrows all the arrows are inwards let me just finish it up quickly hope you understand the point and here this region is tensile so all the arrows outwards 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 pardon the drawing is not that good but you don't really need to draw that good i am sure that you have got the idea here this region this is the region let me just write this this is compression and this is tension brilliant here it's slightly different this region will be undergoing compression so let me just write the comp and this region is going to undergo tension lovely now how can you make this extend this let me just remove the load for a while okay so it's 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 going to be something something yeah like this this way this way so this is the region of compression like this arrows all inwards 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 in in and here this is the region of tension arrow outwards lovely what else this way this way this way so this is basically how the stress prof stress profile can be sketched right so you, you are not a student of computer graphics who can do this stuff on a computer you you need to do mathematics you are a civil and a mechanical engineer so you need to have you need to have proper knowledge of mathematics or these mathematical expressions to draw these plots right so how to establish a final relationship because as i told you that the load is neither going to be along the y direction the load is neither going to be along this z direction the load will be somewhere in between it will be inclined stuff how still will you be able to work out the magnitude of stress and how can you able how can you, how will you be able to sketch the stress profile that is a bit challenging and that is exactly what the objective of today's session is now one one thing which you should have been able to work out and think about it in case of pure bending in case of pure bending the bending moment was acting about any one principal axis in case of pure bending the bending moment was acting about this z axis mz you have this formula 
in case of pure bending the bending moment could have acted upon with respect to this y axis also the bend would have been this fashion here the bend is this fashion here the bend is this fashion that means in case of pure bending the applied moment was always acting with respect to any one principal axis isn't it but in case of unsymmetrical bending listen to this very carefully in case of unsymmetrical bending the bending moment neither acts about any of the three principal axis x y or the z direction it is somewhere in between right and what we wish to accomplish is to have a final relationship which indicates or which rather connects mz my bending stress iz iy all of this stuff together that is exactly what the agenda of today's session in and you can you can clearly see that you have the neutral axis this fashion and if you just try to extend extend this line behind just stretch the line behind you will have a neutral surface absolutely horizontal take a look at this figure this line this at all the points on this line the value of mag or value of magnitude of stress is zero right isn't it and if you stretch this line behind again what you have is a neutral surface it's vertical here it is horizontal here it is vertical isn't it now when the bending moment is neither acting with respect to the z axis neither it is acting with respect to the y axis it won't be horizontal it won't be vertical it would be somewhere in between and what we wish to calculate is the orientation of that neutral axis what is the angle alpha that the neutral axis makes that's a bit challenging that is the objective today okay <coughs> so we have some water and let's let's jump into it and this is going to be amazing watch the video at a higher speed okay suggestion to you again save time all right so all of this is done you know the stress distribution with respect to mz positive z this is the stress distribution with respect to the positive y that is the stress distribution with respect to this positive z okay this is how the moment acts this way this way this way right this way curl your fingers curl your fingers compressive tensile curl your fingers right if the moment is acting with respect to just a second if the moment is acting with respect to this positive z keep your thumb along this positive z curl your fingers this is inwards this is obviously outwards again if the moment is acting with respect to this positive y keep your thumb over here curl your fingers here it is going to be compressive here it is obviously going to be tensile fingers in fingers curling out fingers curling in fingers curling out here fingers curling in fingers curling out this region that's why it is tension <sighs> now it's going to be very challenging for me finale right bending stress profile drawings plus math let's do this here we go i'll take my time okay one sec where are my notes loading i'll try to draw small figures i think we, i think we can get rid of this because it's it's a bit too long and we need to do mathematical analysis also okay so if you have not noted these contents do take a screenshot and note it down right okay all right let's do this <coughs> first of all let me apply the load let me draw this rather quickly let me have a plus sign Uh, this is not exactly a square but a rectangle okay and uh, this is equal to something right well just like a chemical equation when you mix two substances together two chemicals together that's the result in final product okay load 
let me put one over here loads loading let me just draw the right loading actually actually the case is like this right the loading is in this fashion right that's inclined lovely inclined at a certain angle okay this load can essentially be decomposed or broken into components one along the y direction one along the z direction let me show you and better to have an axis z and that's y x okay we don't have to eat a lot of space that's x y z once again final term y z x done z x z x y z x y oh, these are all positive right the opposites are negatives anyway loading we are talking about loading so the loading just take a look at this this is exactly what is asked in the question if you see a case like this that is going to be unsymmetrical bending what you need to do is you need to decompose you need to have two components one along y one along z right if you do that you'll have something like this let me show you along the y direction the load would be something of this sort that's it w y in the y direction or in the negative y direction let's say the loading is opposite to this positive y that is negative y also let me just rub this for now here the loading would be something of this sort extend this extend this ah uh, that's it that's enough this way right what is this w z in the positive z direction this is in the negative z direction anyway so that is exactly how the loading would happen what about the bending moment can you make the bending moment okay so this will bend the beam in this fashion this fashion right this fashion so all the this portion will be undergoing compression this undergoing tension and we can make that where is my green color i don't know if this is going to be visible because i don't own a very good camera this is this video has been recorded through my samsung phone and the bending moment would be ah lovely this moment is with respect to the z axis lovely now here the beam would bend in this fashion here the beam would bend in this fashion like this this way this way very difficult to demonstrate right in the xz plane just try to understand and this is something i had already demonstrated right and we're going to be making the stress profile also final stress profile is something that we are very much interested in and that is exactly how you can you can find the orientation of neutral axis <sighs> okay what else so you'll have a moment oh lovely we got this moment with respect to this positive one lovely <coughs> <coughs> so you can say you can say basically i don't know if in the camera it is going to be visible also this is the moment with respect to positive y direction of moment okay this is how the moment is acting compression here tension here this is moment is acting with respect to the positive z so let me just add one more arrow lovely so let me just write mz and here my so basically this was our starting point and what we've done is decompose the load into y component and the z component 
So what we see, this is mz, this is my. So the resultant moment is going to be somewhere in between. The resultant moment is going to be somewhere here. Let's say m. And it obviously is going to make some kind of angle theta with this positive direction of z axis. So what you can essentially say is that, so what we can do is we can say that this m is equal to m cos theta and this m will be equal to m sin theta. mz is equal to this over here. This is going to come have a component. This mz is equal to m cos theta and this my is equal to m sin theta. Lovely. Right? Right? So we are breaking down. We are breaking down this entire concept. Okay. So that was all about loading and moments, how the moments are acting, how the loading is happening. Now, let me talk about the stress distribution. We are going to make this sketch once again. And you know very well, for this very case, stress can be written as, listen to this, my I, my I. Here, the bending is happening with respect to the Z axis, Z, Z, okay, and here, again sigma now all these stresses are acting along the x direction only some of them are inwards some of them are outwards here also some of them in this region it is inwards in this region it is outwards but it is acting along the x direction even here in this region it is inwards and in this region it is outwards but always acting along the x direction so if your tutor or your teacher asks in which direction is the stress happening in this case it's in the x direction could be positive x could be negative x sometimes inwards into the cross section sometimes outwards the cross section outwards corresponds to tension inwards correspond to compression okay so this again now we can write this as m z over i the bending is happening with respect to the y axis m y i o i right so you are a student of mechanical or civil engineering you should be able to know how this area moment of inertia can be worked out right for different cross section rectangular square triangular, parabolic, whatever it could be. Now, so this was the first sense or first hint of how things are going to span out, right? So this has been decomposed, right? We started from here and then we decomposed. Okay. Now, secondly, secondly, we are going to talk about, and this is going to be very interesting, stress distribution. Let's talk about stress distribution a bit more. So, how can we do this? So, just, just watch. Better to have a smaller figure because I need some space to do the derivation for orientation also. Okay. Okay, that's done. Almost done. Plus, uh, let me put it here. let me rather have a bigger picture okay so that you guys can understand it properly right okay let's say let me just try to differentiate this let's say this is um, sigma x sigma x as I told you stress is taking place in the x direction right now, add this fiber, y is 0, in this region, if you put the value of y is equal to 0, the value of stress is going to be 0. So, along the neutral axis, it is going to be 0. In this case, we are going to move in, this, in the z direction, either in the positive z, this is positive z, by the way, this is the convention which I have taken, and this is the negative z. If you move in this region, and if you put the value of z is equal to 0, z is equal to 0, the stress is going to be 0. Stress is 0 in this, along this vertical line, stress is 0 in this horizontal line. On moving away from this vertical line this way or this way you are going to get different values of stress and the stress is maximum at this point at the farthest 
this point. Stress is maximum at the topmost fiber. The strip is the, here. The stress is maximum at the rightmost fiber or the leftmost fiber. Here, the stress is maximum at the topmost or the bottommost fiber. Again, what we wish to do is <coughs> to make a sketch, right? So that can be done fairly easy. Let me just show it to you. Um, black color. So, so, so here the stress is maximum, right? Here also. It's going to be maximum here again the farthest fiber here also it is going to be maximum just keep watching this is visually this is very beautiful here as you move above the value of stress keeps on increasing keep on increasing the value of i these two fellows are constant these two fellows are constant keep on increasing the value of i there is going to be a corresponding increase in x so that is the plot linear here also keep on increasing the value of y in the negative z direction right so this basically has a negative sign i forgot to put it up okay remember something which we had discussed in the previous article hope you remember turn the pages secondly if you move in the negative z direction again the stress would increase and increase and increase and this is exactly how the stress distribution looks like let me make few arrows uh, lovely uh, no, 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 not like that. Okay, here it is undergoing compression. Tension. Tension. Here also. Tension. Here. Uh, compression. Very difficult to make in 3D. Again, tension. Okay. So that was. This was your neutral axis. Considering one component of this, this vertical component, this becomes automatically, this qualifies as your neutral axis. Absolutely horizontal. No big deal. Now in this case, the neutral axis is going to be this way. You've seen that. This is a neutral axis. Right? So, if you try to move away from this neutral axis towards the right, obviously the stress would increase and this is going to be the pattern. Here, just a sec. this way this this looking good this is exactly how the stress increases this region is a region of compression so therefore an inward arrow region of compression therefore an inward arrow a region of compression inward arrow inward arrow inward arrow inward arrow as you move towards this side this is a region of tension right so tension all the points will be stressed outwards this way so so let me try to make this right slightly difficult to make okay so this is going to be tension 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 compression that's tension so that is the stress profile for you again remember for all positive value of y you're going to have negative value of stress that is inwards compressive for all negative value of y minus minus would become plus and positive value of stress corresponds to tensile stress for all this is z this is the z direction positive z direction for all positive values of z you're going to have positive values of stress that means tension for all negative values of z this is negative z you're going to have negative values of bending stress okay so inwards that's why <sighs> finally this is the maximum stress this again is the maximum stress and these are two different cases let me just put it up this way this is the maximum stress let me just call this sigma x max and let me just call this sigma x dash max for load acting in the vertical direction or you can say for moment with respect to the z axis sigma x max when moment acts with respect to the y axis this is sigma x dash max right we are at the corner point this is going to be the maximum stress here also here also all of them are going to be same right this 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 same sigma x mem and this is this 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 at the corner points sigma x dash m right just a second guys let me check if the shoot is still on or not yeah it's going <coughs> 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 
<coughs> okay the video has become a bit too long but it's worth it right again neutral axis this way this way how would the neutral axis change how would you the neutral axis orient finally in this figure that is something which is very very interesting okay let's work it out together here we go just take a look at this point um let me let me just call this a a it's point a inwards inwards in the same direction if in the same direction they'll add up is it it yeah and let me just have one more exemption sigma x max is greater than sigma x dash max this is max by the way i'm not writing it entirely understand remember sigma x max okay so if you watch this these two arrows will add up so there is one arrow like this another arrow like this so they'll add up so the length would increase isn't it uh, this way right and the magnitude would be sigma x max plus sigma x dash max lovely right so <laughs> we've won a war now right so uh, this is exactly how the profile will span out just take a look one once more in out which one is bigger which one is bigger this one is bigger this one is smaller because we have assumed this right in that case in that case one arrow is inwards one arrow is outwards so they will not add up we will have to uh, subtract it but which one dominates this one dominates because this is bigger right if this dominates obviously the arrow will be slightly smaller in size like this i'm sure you got the point yes i am similarly in this case this arrow is outwards this arrow is outwards both of them in the same direction that is outwards they'll add up they'll add up again the length is going to be same this manner let me check this yeah okay looking good finally this out this in which one dominates this fellow dominates so the direction is going to be outwards but the length will reduce slightly this is the exact length and it's going to be like this right so here sigma x sigma x dash and what happened here in this region sigma x max minus sigma x dash max and here also you are going to have the same value right let me just make a quick check yeah we are doing good doing good okay let me just not write it the final sketch see if you can do this stuff on a computer right if you keep on keep on adding all these vectors in a particular direction you will have a sketch something like this like this like this uh it looks a bit curved okay looks good now here the neutral axis which was right at the center of this line it will go slightly above somewhere in this region and it is going to eventually join i think make a dark line with this and here the neutral axis which was here it will fall below right just try to think about this pause the video and try to think about it this is exactly how the stress profile would look like now let me make some more arrows so that you can have a clearer picture very difficult to draw parallel lines right this region and if i can just go ahead go ahead and connect these two points right if you watch carefully carefully this is y this way that is x 
and that my friends is z the angle made by the neutral axis is represented let me just make it here now some of you guys might be thinking sir is there some kind of connection between this alpha that the neutral axis makes let me just put right n a over here neutral axis makes with this positive z and is there some kind of connection with this theta that the resultant moment makes yes there is some kind of connection and we will talk about that in case of orientation but for now just try to sink in the concept keep on doing this and all the fibers over here below this neutral axis will be acting in somewhat this fashion entirely compression uh, my lines are not going straight hope you've got the point this way right so that is the cross section of the beam when the load applied is slightly inclined right that is unsymmetrical bending for you where the applied moment is not acting with respect to the z axis or with respect to the y axis it is somewhere in between right so that is bending moment for you and its sketch the moment is somewhat like this right not essentially with respect to the z axis or with respect to the y axis but somewhere in between and it would be bend the beam in in this fashion this fashion and this is the sketch of the stress distribution just a sec let me add more effects i should have made this in a computer it took so long okay these are the notes right tension compression lovely now now so that being said we can now follow and uh, work out as to how this angle alpha can be calculated <coughs> <coughs> and you can say that the stress over here in this in this region has essentially been calculated sigma x finally sigma x or let's say sigma right we know very well that it is acting in the x direction sigma in general is going to be because of this and because of this that means this formula plus this formula that is my i let me just write this my i and here with respect to the z axis again i my i z z y y let me check my i negative sign and this is positive so that is the net stress this is exactly what we've done right a very important formula okay now what we wish to do is we wish to find the angle alpha that the neutral axis finally makes so i've got to rub so please 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 first of all let me get out of the way and please take a screenshot of all of this done okay so the final topic orientation of neutral axis so whatever space we have let us try to fit it over here okay so you know very well that's the neutral axis stress is zero and how the stress is calculated sigma is equal to my i isn't it z z x and here this is the neutral axis how the stress is calculated this is m z this direction or this direction upon i but acting with respect to this with respect to this positive y axis isn't it and here it is acting with respect to this z axis so z axis z z this is with respect to the moment is acting this fashion with respect to the y axis 
lovely lovely okay uh, again this is positive and this is negative based on the convention that we have used all right as far as this particular figure is concerned this is the consolidated stress calculation formula right this is the line at every point of which the magnitude of stress is zero so if at every point the stress is zero what you can do is you can put this expression over here is equal to zero so we have this minus m z y by i z plus m y z over i y is equal to zero if you plug it in just try to solve this let me let me just try to solve this right at every point on the neutral axis the stress is zero so this qualifies this equation qualifies for every point on the neutral axis isn't it okay let me put it up this way y is equal to y can be written as <coughs> y can be written as here we go m y over m z dot i z over i y anything else and all of this stuff multiplied by z let me just make a quick check my by mz iz by iy times of z yeah good to go okay so this looks like an equation of a line isn't it you you remember y is equal to mx plus c you remove c there is no intercept y is equal to mx that also is a equation of line passing through the origin something which we have we all have gone through in school level okay how can we proceed you know my my just just a few moments back just uh, go up 5 to 10 minutes back in the in the video you will see that my where can i write this uh, where can i write this let me just write it over here m z this way was m cos theta and here my this was my right the moment was here it was making a certain angle theta remember so it's cos component and it's sin component cos component in the z direction that is m cos theta and sin component in the y direction m sin theta so what you can do is m y m sin theta m sin theta m z m cos theta m cos theta m sin theta by m cos theta m and m will cancel out what remains is sin theta by cos sin theta and you'll have an expression like y let me just write it over here on putting the values of my my is nothing but m sin theta and mz is nothing but m cos theta when you plug it in you will have a relationship y is equal to tan theta times of iz over iy and times of z right <sighs> the black is finished better get working with this blue color okay just just a bit of flashback needed from your 10th class uh, mathematics here we have the axis x y the equation of this line is y equals mx the angle that this makes is theta right and you know the relationship between m and theta m is nothing but tan theta isn't it so the angle that this is making this is nothing but the slope this essentially qualifies as the slope if this is the slope this is what you call m if this is m this is what you call tan theta right but we are talking about the neutral axis and the angle that the neutral axis makes is not theta but it is alpha theta is the angle made by the or theta is the angle defining the resultant moment m which was decomposed into m cos theta and m sin theta once again once again see this this is y is equal to mx if i say this is not x this is z then this would become y is equal to mz it's that simple and obviously this m is the slope slope is represented by tan theta here we have already used theta and theta has been used to define the resultant moment how can you define the neutral axis by this angle alpha now so just you need to replace this theta by alpha this is going to be tan alpha so finally you have this relationship tan alpha equals times of tan theta times of i z over i y so that's exactly how the location of neutral axis 
can be worked out. You just need to know at what angle or uh, how the, the this theta is corresponds to the direction of moment, right? How the moment has been defined. That is theta. Plug it in. You need to know iz. You need to know iy based on the geometry, square, triangular, whatever it is, right? And then obviously you can work out the location of neutral axis with respect to this positive z direction with respect to this positive z direction okay something else which i need to tell you there is some kind of connection between alpha and theta so let's say if iz is equal to iy if that is so then tan theta will be equal to tan alpha or you can say theta will be equal to alpha that is also true right so this brings us to an end of today's session and I hope you liked it. And it was quite long. Kya kare? Karna padta hai. Hmm? Things are very complicated. You need to devote proper time. I need to devote proper time to teach it. You need to have some patience to grasp the concepts. So guys, that was all for mechanics of solids this time around. And in the next lecture, something else which needs to be taught on unsymmetrical bending, we'll be going through that. And some numericals also we'll be solving at least there are going to be three lectures that I have planned for unsymmetrical bending and then that would be over. Then we'll be taking up some more concepts, more challenges in the form of torsion, in the form of thin shells, in the form of columns. A lot of things are to be covered in case of mechanics of solids and all you civil as well as mechanical engineers can benefit. So guys, that was all from my side for today. I'm going to see you again in the next video. Until then, take care. Have a nice day. Keep learning. Keep watching. Thank you.